Hello everyone, so in this video what I wanted to explain to you is your upcoming evaluation which is uh, an evaluation related to remote presentation of technical uh, report. Um, uh, it's, we give it an identifier and we refer to it as EBB. Um, it is worth 25% of your semester. This is individual, so you will uh, do this uh, work individually, but the preparation of it will be in cohesion with or, or um, in, in discussion with your group your group that you initially formed in the semester. Uh, and roughly every student is expected to give a five-minute talk. So I'll go through some of the slides to give you an, a, a, a further explanation of what is required for this assignment. I did discuss it in some of the uh, previous videos, but this is a deliberate uh, uh, short video that, that will explain specifically how you should um, uh, do this deliverable. So on to it. So just to give you a perspective of what is uh, what is the required for EVB, uh, we'll just see how it's linked to the uh, previous things uh, in previous deliverables that we did in the semester. So initially, uh, if you recall, uh, we worked on uh, EV2, uh, and in EV2, what our objective was, was to come up with an outline of a specific case study. So you had uh, the option to form a group and to select a case study. And then once the case study was there, you had to come up with an outline for your technical report and essentially a skeleton where every student came up with a solution and every solution came up with three sub criteria for their solution. So here I'm using the, the house analogy and that's why you, you see a kind of the foundation and the wall of a house being built. So we're just using this as an analogy uh, to, to kind of better comprehend what we're doing. We're building a report uh, which is kind of like building a house. Uh, essentially after finishing EV2 we move to EV3 to the uh, to this uh, deliverable and in this one we wanted to add further credibility to the writing and in here uh, your task was to to do research and to find sources uh, peer-reviewed sources uh, recent relatively recent peer-reviewed sources uh, from 2015 onward um, and we told you it should be published work uh, that, that comes from um, uh, different uh, 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 like peer-reviewed search engines, including IEEE Explore, uh, Wiley, uh, IET, and uh, uh, in others, uh, in other publisher, Elsevier, and other publishers. Um, and in here, you, your task was really to to reference these sources and to cite it in your text. So we did that, and this is kind of the analogy of essentially putting a roof uh, on your construction. Uh, after this, what we did is we moved to EV6, and in EV6, this was an individual work, uh, and in here, every student was uh, was expected to, to work and to develop their own uh, technical solution that they're proposing. So every student did that uh, independently. Uh, uh, on their own uh, and just kind of develop that. So in terms of this analogy, it's as though um, we are kind of uh, updating or we're constructing and we're putting together the different rooms inside a house, the kitchen, uh, the family room, the living room, uh, the basement, and so on and so forth. Uh, and, uh, and then eventually in EV7, you had to bring it all together. So all the different uh, EV6s were brought together uh, and then you had to massage it so that as so that it appears as though it was written by one person and then you had to uh, to make it coherent to make it consistent and to make it um, uh, uh, in in a unified way and that's what you did for your EV7 when you built and you uh, put together your final report as a group. And as we discussed, uh, creating a technical report as a group is always uh, difficult because uh, different people will have different style of writing, uh, and that was the challenge. And so how do you make it consistent, and how do you make a writing appear as though it was done by one person? That was the challenge, and, uh, and that's what you did in EV7. At this point, the task is to essentially take this report that you've done, your EV7, and then to present it, to present it. And we will do this in the assignment that we refer to as EVB. 
Uh, this is worth 25%, like I said earlier, uh, and it is individual, although you are working uh, in group to figure out the different parts that you're you're working on, um, but but it's individual, so that we we remain, um, so that we apply the, uh, the, the you know, social distance. Um, so in here, uh, I'll explain more on what is required in EVB and how you can uh, find it and how you could relate it to your technical report on the next slide. At this point, we have a better understanding of what is uh, what is EVB. Uh, and here I wanted to specifically explain what is required in the deliverable. So for your deliverable, uh, essentially every student should discuss the proposed technical solution that they discussed uh, in few uh, pages in their technical report of EV7. Uh, so the starting point for you should always be your technical report, your EV7, that document, that final work that you've done regarding the technical report. This is your starting point. So you go from there and uh, depending on how many people you're in the group. So let's assume we have five members in the group. So you have one student, second student, third, fourth, fifth uh, students. Now, I, I do recognize that some group, they, uh, we have uh, uh, groups that have four students, and that's, that's okay. You could just scale it down to four students. Uh, some groups uh, are formed with uh, five students, uh, like this one here. Some groups are formed with six students. Uh, so wh whichever the case might be, just scale it down. In this example, I'm just showing five individual, five students. Uh, in the sequence of who is the first student, who's the second student, who's the third, uh, is it should be obvious from the report. So the way it works is the first student uh, is expected to discuss the introduction of the report, whatever it was discussed in the report here, the introduction, um, and also the first solution. So if you look at your report, your EV7, the first solution that was discussed, that essentially uh, tells us who the first uh, student is. And then the second solution would be the second student, the third solution, the third student, the fourth solution, the fourth student, the fifth solution, uh, the fifth student. And, and that's it. So uh, what is expected from the first student? Um, and this could be the team leader that uh, every group have, or it could not be the team leader, depending on which solution was the first in the here. So perhaps it is the team leader, then by all means, if it's not the team leader, then it's it's whoever shows up there. So the, the student uh, that, that will present first, uh, or, or that will be the first student in, in the report, uh, should essentially give us an introduction of the report. So this student is expected to give us an introduction of what was discussed here for the entire report. So in the introduction, the students will explain the case study, uh, the technical uh, challenges that were brought up by the case study, the target audience, uh, the proposed solutions, an overview, a quick overview of the proposed solutions, and the name of the group members. So that's it. So I would, uh, so essentially this part should be roughly, uh, you know, six slides. Uh, I don't think you, you need to have more than that. The second student will focus, like we said, on the second solution, and that's the second solution that shows up in the report. The third student on the third solution that shows up in the report. The fourth on the fourth solution. And the fifth would, sh would be the last solution that is given in the report. Uh, and then this student uh, with uh, that, ha that that discuss the last solution should also discuss the conclusion of the entire report in their talk. Okay, and like we said, uh, the slides number here is roughly six slides, um, five slides for the others, and then six slides here. Now it may feel a bit unfair, but but we have to have the introduction in the conclusion, and that's why it's going to be like this. Uh, I don't know who the first solution is in in different cases. I do have your EV7, but uh, but so so in a way this is also kind of a random. So um, so that's the way it is. Okay. Now, uh, mind you, I should also mention that uh, the uh, the conclusion, so in co the conclusion, so the last, the student that will discuss the conclusion of the report, this student should also give us uh, uh, essentially the overview of the proposed solution. So just a kind of a quick uh, overview of the proposed solution. Um, and uh, what are the, the, uh, the takeaways of these uh, proposed solutions? Okay. And also what is next? 
What is next? How can you move forward with a client so that you can solve the IT uh, challenges that they have? So what's next? What, what's the plan to move forward with a client? Okay, so overview of the proposed solution, uh, a takeaway, a takeaway um, uh, uh, kind of uh, takeaways of, of these solutions, and also what is next. So that's the, the task of the student. So this should be one slide. This should be uh, one slide, and then the rest, the, the solution should be five slides, and then this should be five slides. This should be five slides, five slides, five slides. And then if you, uh, I also recommend that you have a cover uh, page for your uh, slides. So uh, so if you add a cover page, then you'll end up with seven slides here. If you add a cover page, you'll end up with six slides, six slides, six slides, and seven slides here. Uh, what I ask you is the following, is that the font and the style of the slides should be consistent. Right, so all the uh, all the members in the group should have a consistent font and style uh, for the slides. Uh, so let's say the third student, when they come in, they would use the same kind of style format and template that was used by by the other students. Uh, and they could also uh, they they should have a cover uh, the uh, the the cover page for their presentation. And on the cover page, instead of writing, for instance, this student's name or this student, they just write their own name on it. Okay, uh, and I hope that uh, that makes sense. So, so try to be consistent uh, so that um, you all use the same uh, um, format and, and font for your slides. So this means that you need to discuss this uh, uh, remotely uh, to to uh, to make sure that uh, this is uh, this is done. Uh, the 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 team lead of every section is expected to 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 help in this. In this area, so they should come up with a with a style for the slides, and then this uh, style for the slides should be sent to every team member so that they could work on their own um, their own presentation part. Okay. So I'll continue the, the to explain how uh, you should uh, record yourself and how to uh, to submit your assignment on the next slide. At this point, uh, I want to quickly go over how you're going to record yourself. Uh, when you explain your technical presentation. So you could uh, find the, uh, uh, you could actually do this using uh, PowerPoint. And of course, every student, uh, every one of our students, they have access to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to PowerPoint. Um, and if you don't, then you could certainly download it uh, by uh, referring to the, uh, to the installation uh, instruction on the Sheridan IT support page. So you could certainly go there and look up for that. Otherwise, you should have the the, the license and then the right to have um, a PowerPoint on your machine. So what you will need to do is you will need to uh, uh, to to follow perhaps uh, the instruction that is explained on the Microsoft uh, website. Uh, and in this website, um, you could actually look it up on Google. You could search it or, or any search engine. You could look up record a slideshow with narration and slide timing. So you can find uh, this and then the, it will essentially explain you how it's done. So you'll have your slides in the background and then you'll have your face um, uh, with a camera showing up on the corner. So you could do that uh, there and you could experiment. I do rec uh, recommend that you do this as soon as possible so that you get this part done. You could test it so that this part is done. And then uh, during the week, you could uh, prepare your slide and then prepare your presentation. Okay. So uh, how does it work? I'll just mention very briefly, what are the steps required to do? So step number one, you need to build your slides. So just build your slides, just the typical way of building slides using, using PowerPoint. I assume many of you have already used PowerPoint in the past. Uh, if you haven't, then then you'll experience you'll 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 see how it's done when you work on it. But I I really believe that many of you have used this in the past. Uh, so use PowerPoint to build your slides. So whether it's five slides or six slides plus a cover uh, slide, so do that there. Once this is done, the next step is to use the the approach explained here to record your um, your slides with a, a camera, with a narration, so that you, you, you're you you're talking uh, with a camera, but uh, as you're going through the slides. So you're doing all this, the recording of your face with the slides through PowerPoint. So that's the next step. Once the slides are built, then you do this, okay? The third step is you save the file that you create to MP4. 
right? The file that you create of your uh, of your slide presentation with the voiceover and the camera, uh, you then save it as MP4. Uh, then what you do is um, you could then uh, upload this file to uh, YouTube, uh, and and that's it. Uh, and just make sure that when you upload it to YouTube, you you put it as unlisted. So this is very important that you place it as unlisted so that it becomes private and only um, uh, I would be have only I would have access to it uh, when I do the evaluation. And that's it. So that kind of explains you the 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 process. So for this, I'm going to give you the link. I'll post the link for where you could find the instructions for this on Slate. Uh, and then you'll 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 go through that. I do recommend that you try this and you experiment as soon as possible so you get up to speed on how this uh, component is done. Just do a small test with um, just a, a testing uh, uh, one or two testing uh, slides and, and just to see how this is uh, this functions. And if everything goes well, then then really build your your slides for your from your EV7 uh, and the solution that you have in your EV7, and then the rest should go uh, straight forward. Uh, there is a deadline. The deadline is uh, uh, next week on Friday, but you don't need to wait until then. Whenever you finish uh, this, you could just upload it, submit it, and, and move on uh, and so that you could focus on your other final exams. Okay, so now that your video is done, uh, the video uh, with your uh, presentation is done and completed and it is uploaded to YouTube in an unlisted format, what you have to do is you need to submit the assignment to me. The way you will submit it is as follows. So we will use a form and it's similar to what we did in EVA. There is this form, this is a specific form for EVB. If you see, is specific for EVB, and in it, I explain the the steps that you need to follow. So there's a five or, or six steps here. This this step here, step two, is optional. You don't need to do it if you if you don't. You could right away jump in from step one to uh, step three on the way to step six. So what what you do, number one, is you fill in this uh, this form. So you fill it in uh, accordingly. The first uh, box tells you to write your name. So please write your first name and your last name. Uh, the second box, enter your student ID. In the third box here, you select your um, your section. There's a drop down menu. You can select your section here. Uh, and in this uh, entry here, you could select your team name and team ID. So every student, uh, you are a member in a, in a specific team. So please uh, select that, your team name and team ID. You'll find it here, just select it. And then the link of your YouTube uh, uh, video should be pasted here. So just copy it from YouTube and paste it here. And here it asks you a question. Is your video unlisted on YouTube? Uh, and the, the answer that I'm looking for is really yes. Uh, so just select yes. Hopefully nobody selects no. If it is a no, then go to YouTube, change it. Uh, you don't need to upload again. You just need to change the setting to unlisted. If you put it in public, you could easily do that. So just make sure that uh, it is yes. So I put this here just to kind of remind you that uh, I want uh, to see the word uh, a check mark next to yes for unlisted, uh, and hopefully you're doing this when it's really unlisted. And then at the end you could just uh, select here. You press a, an arrow here, and then automatically you could just select the date of the day you're submitting this. Uh, that's it. So you fill in this form, uh, fill in the form as it says here in step one, and then in step two you could print it uh, to uh, a fixed PDF. Or if you you don't want to do that, because I know it will, some people had difficulty doing this, so you could skip, skip uh, step number two. You could right away um, save this file uh, that you filled uh, to your desktop, and then once you saved it, uh, you also need to print your slides that you created. Uh, for uh, for this presentation, your slides, um, just print it to PDF. And now you need to merge both of them. So you need to merge this form and your PowerPoint slides together. So this should be the first page, and then your PowerPoint slides should be uh, after that. Merge them together as a single PDF file. And now your single PDF file could be uploaded to Slate. So upload uh, the, uh, the, this to Slate. You'll go to Assignment EVB and you'll be able to upload it there. On Slate, as you upload your uh, single PDF file, there's also an area where there's a comment. In the comment section, you could actually paste the link of your YouTube video as well. 
So there's no, uh, that, that would be very uh, good if you could do that. It would make it easier for me to access your YouTube video. So you could just also paste it in that comment section. Okay, uh, just may, uh, remember that you have to submit all this by April 17, 2020. So this is Friday, April 17, 2020, and the deadline is 5 p.m. Uh, uh, Eastern. Okay, uh, so this is a major report. It's worth 25% of the semester. So just make sure uh, that you do that. And if I don't receive it, then unfortunately this would, would happen. Okay. Now, I'll just show you an example uh, of how to do it. But before that, I just want to remind you that this form, uh, you could the submission form for EVB, you could find it on Slate. I already uploaded this on Slate, so you'll find it there. Um, in, the, in the evaluation folder, you'll find an EVB fold, a subfolder, and in it, you'll find this, uh, this form that you could download and then fill it in accordingly. Uh, let's say you fill it in. Uh, this would look something like this. So first name, last name, student ID. You select the section. In this case, I'm selecting the Thursday section. And then you select some name. I didn't want to show the name, so I didn't select it, but you'll have an option. All the names of your sections and, and team numbers are here, so you'll be able to see it. And then uh, you paste the link for your YouTube video. Hopefully it is unlisted. You put a check mark here, you put the date, and that's it. You save it to your desktop. Uh, then the next thing is you say uh, you print your um, PowerPoint slides to PDF, uh, and then you merge both of them, and you upload this single PDF to Slate, and that uh, should be uh, done. And this should enable you to submit your evaluation. So in here, I wanted to uh, to uh, briefly go through the evaluation rubric for EVB. Uh, there is some overlap with what we did with EVA, so you'll see that uh, in this uh, in here. But this is a specific rubric only for EVB. So this is what it is, um, and uh, you as you'll see, there are two uh, components to it. So in here, uh, the objective is to see how you perform in terms of uh, you giving a presentation. And in here, uh, the objective is to see how your slides are designed and how they are done. Uh, so this is five marks out of 25, and this is uh, 20 marks uh, out of 25, okay? So this is 80% uh, uh, and this is 20%. So uh, the, uh, the, the items that we look at is uh, number one, voice and clarity. So when you talk, uh, is it clear? Uh, is your voice proper? Is it clear? Can we understand what you're trying to say here? Um, are you uh, consistent with the, with the message that you're trying to convey? All that is, is seen uh, in here. So depending on how you perform, uh, you're either uh, somewhere on the spectrum. So either very poor, poor, average, good, or excellent. As you notice, we don't have zero. So even if you do a... a and not so good of a work, uh, you'll end up with 20%. Uh, I, I hope everybody will do better than that, but but that's 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 what it is. So we'll, we don't have zero, we begin at 20%, and you could go all the way to excellent, which is 100%. So if you do uh, well, you get 100%, you get four. If you get less than that, then you get uh, uh, less than four, well, whatever the, 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 the percentage of it is. Uh, then the next thing is to look at your confidence and your posture. So uh, when you talk, is your voice shaking? Uh, are you confident? Uh, uh, th th that will project in your presentation style and also your posture. Are you standing square to the to the camera? Uh, you could also be standing. That's okay if you're able to, to film, but, but you have a presentation in the background so you have to coordinate and test to see how you could uh, you could you could do this effectively the the other thing is eye contact we talked about it before so your eye contact should be straight to the um, to the camera you are talking remotely so don't look at uh, the screen uh, some people they uh, they look at the screen because they want to look at themselves but that's not what you should be doing you should be looking at the camera uh, not the screen uh, not the size not the ground but really the screen uh, and uh, and if you do that effectively you'll you'll be anywhere on the spectrum the the fourth one is the knowledge of the topic so you're trying to propose a solution an IT related solution to your technical challenge and we want to see how you are knowledgeable in this uh, solution and then the uh, this item is time management so you have a budget of five minutes 
uh, and you should be on track with this. So if you don't get the uh, the proper timing, you could keep recording yourself until you 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 achieve this. This is usually a point where people uh, don't succeed when I do this in class. Uh, this sort of evaluation in class, they usually don't do well here with the time management. They either they either uh, go beyond the time or or way shorter than the expected time. Uh, so they just keep track of that as well. And all of them, if you have an upper uh, value of four marks, uh, and if it's less than that, then it's less than four. Okay. Uh, then for the visual aids and, uh, and slides, so here we're essentially looking at how you uh, you design and you you have put together your slide. Um, one of the first things that I'd like to see on your slide is did you keep uh, are, are your slides concise um, and straight to the point? Uh, so you could watch some of the videos that I posted uh, regarding this in terms of oral presentation videos and also the graphics video. So that that should help you here. So this. This is uh, concise writing, format, and font should be in the oral presentation videos. There's part one, part two, you can see it on, on YouTube. And the captivating graphics should be in the, um, in the, um, in the graphics uh, video that I uploaded earlier this week. So you could find that to give you hints on that. Uh, so if it's, uh, I want to see that uh, you have concise uh, 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 words and, 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 and short sentences on your slides, not big paragraphs, not things that you copy from your report and you paste it on your slides. That's not what you want. Uh, and you should essentially uh, use, take advantage of uh, bullet, bulleted uh, uh, presentation uh, as you build your slide. So depending on how you do, uh, you'll be anywhere here. Uh, so uh, not concise, uh, uh, slightly concise, somewhat concise, concise, or suitably concise. This is also, you should be careful. Sometimes when I say write uh, slides that are concise, people just write one or two words. That's also not good. You, uh, not too concise and not very long, so you need to find a good balance here. Uh, here, I will look at the format, the font, and the style. So the format, the font, and the style of your slides should be consistent. Uh, it should be appealing. So when you look at it, it looks professional, um, and it should be worthy of, of an engineer. Uh, so so this is the what we will look at. And every member of the group should have the same format, font, and style. So this should be consistent across the group members. And here, uh, what we look at uh, uh, with your slides is if you have captivating graphics, not useless, irrelevant uh, graphics. Don't overfill it with pictures that, that don't add value. So you have to be careful when you add graphics. Uh, look at the video that I uh, posted on graphics and how to use them uh, in presentation. You have to add graphics that add value to your uh, to your presentation. Uh, and, and if you do that effectively, we'll will give you some grade uh, on the spectrum. So the maximum grade you could get here is two, maximum grade you could get here is one, maximum grade you could get here is two, and then if you add all of this together, that adds up to 25, okay? Uh, that's the rubric, this is the rubric that I will use for your EVB, and uh, and that's it. So good luck with, your, um, with this work. It is due on April 17, 2020 at 5 p.m. Thank you.